I figured there's no better way to actually give you an overview of what we do in production or my background within the industry is by showing you in the actual warehouse that we make your products. My story starts uh, basically when I was about 11 years old helping my parents actually be a reseller in the fragrance industry. So I'm very familiar with the hustling, the startups, the guys who are working out of their garage till 2 a.m. who's selling in the flea markets and the malls and the trade shows and the whole nine. So I definitely come from grassroots from the bottom and uh, have worked my way up to the manufacturing side. I have basically done every aspect of the business. So I started as dish boy. So I was cleaning all the dishes and I realized very quickly that's not where I wanted to be. Uh, anything else in the company, I would definitely move from doing dishes. So they gave me forklift duty. I was uh, offloading, loading trucks, shrink wrapping skids and that type of thing. Um, but I definitely could tell that wasn't going to be a, a lifer situation. So I asked, where's the next step for me to move up in the company? And they said, well, the next logical position is, is compounding. You know, we actually have an opening. We need you to manufacture fragrances. And when I actually started uh, in my first company through a, uh, a staffing agency, there was only two other guys in the back. So there was no one to really uh, offload the work to or ask somebody for assistance. There was a manager, there was one compounder, and then there was me who was stuck with, with all the GIMP labor. So at that point, we really learned every aspect of production. So you would get your pot, you would take it over to your desk, you would grab each one of the cans behind me, you would pour off your items into the batch, uh, your crystals, your resins, everything in your recipe to actually make the product. You would heat it, you would mix it, and um, then you would take a sample, pack it off, and uh, you know, put it in whatever container the customer wanted, whether that was a 400 pound drum, uh, a 2,000 pound tote, a 10 pound little red pail, you know, whatever the actual product needed to get completed. Then we would take a small sample of that to our lab and it was a pass-fail scenario. So you would go in there and you would tell QC, I just finished this batch for Bubba's Candle Company or, or this batch for this hair care product and they would test it and it was a pass-fail scenario. They'd run all their tests on it, color, refract, specific gravity, and depending on that outcome, let them know exactly what chemicals you put in and what amount. So if any of those numbers were off, they would know there was something wrong. And at that point, the production manager, Robert Block, uh, would basically have a sit down with you and say, look, this job isn't that difficult. You pick up an ingredient, you put it into a bucket, you have a code number, you have a name, and you have an amount. Really shouldn't be that complicated. What I learned in the first six months was there's a lot of room for error and there's a lot of mistakes that you can make. And if you don't get the hang of it, you're fired. So I went from dish boy to forklift driver to I might get fired if I can't figure out how to do compounding. I did a really good job. Everything went well. Um, the company did good. We were doing a ridiculous amount of work. I was working all kind of overtime. And they said, wow, you're doing such a good job. We're gonna hire in three or four more guys to do your job. And we need some help in the lab. Can we have you go into one of our labs and help us out? So at that point, I kind of knew what was going on in production. I knew what things could happen. I knew, I knew how to process. I knew how to pack off. I knew I could check weights. Uh, QC really taught me the ins and outs of naturals and variances and isomers and esters and a lot of other things that, that uh, Lorraine Mills actually dumped into me, which was great. When I got into the lab, I realized there's a lot of of experimental raw materials that we don't actually use in production. So production has roughly 600 raw materials. The lab has another five to 600 raw materials. So there's really you know 1,000 to 1,200 materials that we're really using at any given time. So it was good to get promoted into the lab, and I learned a lot in the lab. So I was shipping out all the samples to all the companies and that type of thing. Uh, but what I didn't realize is. I could compound twice as fast in the lab as I could in production. The reason why is everything's at your compounding station and it's basically just as fast as you can actually pour. 
and um, I was really good and I was really fast. Well, after a couple months of being in the lab, what ended up happening was one of the girls got promoted. Uh, she became a junior perfumer, and another girl got relocated. So all that really left was Josh in the lab. So at one side I was excited, I was lab manager, manager of myself, and now I needed to hire two or three more lab techs to keep up with what was actually happening at the company. So I hired in a couple more lab techs, and uh, business was good. The amount of samples that we were kicking out was high output, so that means all that came back to our production area. So they basically came to me again and they said, well, we'll give you a couple more dollars if you can go out into the production area and become our supervisor. I knew production, I knew the lab, great. I'll go ahead and go out into production and become supervisor. Well, again, wasn't forward thinking. The production manager actually uh, resigned and went to another company. So now I became production manager of a fragrance and flavor company. So that was a big learning curve. I really had to learn purchasing, scheduling, uh, a lot of management uh, techniques, how to handle different people. Um, production employees are different. I mean, you know, warehouse guys are, are, are pretty gung-ho. So I had a couple, you know, 300 pound Vietnam vets that could bear hug drums and, you know, 95 degree warehouse. And, and you know, we had a couple incidents where fights broke out and, you know, Back then, I was only about 180 pounds, so trying to tell you know, older guy what he needed to do, there was, there was a lot of learning that, that had to go on. And um, I basically ran that facility for about six years, uh, flavor and fragrance side. Um, I was at the company roughly nine years altogether. So the good thing about it was I started at the bottom, which I think everybody should start at the bottom within a company. So I learned how to do the dishes, scrub toilets, mop floors, I learned how to do uh, compounding, processing, um, anywhere from a 10 pound, thousand dollar compound to uh, 20 drums, 30 drums for the bigger guys, you know, personal care products and so on. Um, then from there, I went into the lab side, so that gave me good GC mass spec backgrounds. Um, I learned how to actually do the perfumery side, where you could actually smell things and know the difference between, you know, lime oil Mexican, lime oil West Indies, uh, bay oils, orange oil, different times of the season. I mean, I learned a lot in the lab, which is really good. Then on the production side, I really learned time management, um, lean manufacturing, um, and a lot more to do with, with scheduling and the overall business. Then I had a, another guy, Alan Malloy, who was actually the vice president. Um, he really taught me a lot about money management, uh, inventory turns, and um, a, a lot of good things on the accounting side. Then from that, it actually led into um, Udo Frey, who was a, a German tool and die guy, and uh, he came in to kind of help us situate the business uh, when we were going to sell it. And I've, I've worked with a lot of individuals with a lot of different personalities, but Udo really taught me firm and fair. Um, he told me uh, people would never get fired or laid off. They would come to him and quit. And I really didn't understand what that actually meant. But he would have checklist on checklist on checklist. So he would come by first thing in the morning and he would have 40 things that he checked. And that could be anything from uh, the trash outside, underneath the toilet seats, uh, if your files are in place, if sales orders are processed, tracking numbers are done, all within about 15 minute intervals. And if anything was out of place, Udo would let you know. So he really taught me on the other side on how to really get business straightened out. And the reason why he had to be that way is because he did work for bigger companies, Daimler, Chrysler, uh, and so on. So he said, you know, if you have a thousand employees and they're just five minutes late from break, Think of what the impact that is to a company. Now, that being said, I did not take everything that Udo taught me as uh, gospel. And that's not how we run this company. Um, I'm not the typical French perfumer. I know the industry. I know the products. I help everybody out on the technical side. But on the other side, I don't hide in my desk. I don't wear the embroidery suits. 